Well, hello everybody. Welcome to episode 8 of the Detective Notes project. Now, technically the program works and is usable, but there are a few things I'd like to change um, to add and stuff. First, I want people to be able to add new cards or change the cards in the list. There are tons of Cluedo games out there, all kinds of varieties, including a Simpsons one. So if you want to play with those cards, it'd be helpful if you can just tweak that at the beginning of the game. So I'm going to add that option to the, the initial new game set. Um, second, I want people to be able to add car, um, add. I want to add checks so that when someone, when we've got all three cards, or someone, someone has four cards, we know they have four cards. We able to say, well, if we know four of their cards and we know they have four cards, we know they don't have anything else. Um, so that would be a good challenge to add. Um, I also want to know for sure what any card. Oh, when we know what a card is, I want to know. I want to highlight it and say we know that this card is the actual weapon person or something that was involved so i want that highlighted in some big way which we don't yet have and when we know what all the cards are i want to make an alert of some kind of big thing that says this is done um so there's still quite a bit to do but i'm sure we can do it somehow let's get on with it shall we um so here's the code so here's what we've currently got so new game we can change the players names um, oops, I'm still in the wrong window. Matthew, Dave, Sam, and then we click begin. Oh, and there was another problem I missed, because that still says player zero when that should probably say their name. And that can be fixed in our function over here somewhere. Um, let's look up the word player with capital. We'll probably find it that way. Player plus option name plus suspect. That's in the case where we're null. So composing has been killed and we are good to remake options. So, yes, this is the right place. But now we no longer want to write player our option name. We want to write the game the game dot names option name um oh. <laughs> okay d two o oh I do that that was supposed to be an o d two zero um, actually, that was better. D2 quotes. The plus would have probably been the right thing to add there. Um, that may or may not work. I don't know whether this treats string in the same way as it treats ints, because we did have a problem there. So, control R over here. New game. Begin. Uh, P1 suspect. Ha! We did something else in a similar place in our drawing somewhere else. So player naught. So, but we got that was correct. So now we need to find the next place where we've written the word player. Player. And it's probably about the same. It's no longer comp.asker. Oh, yeah, of course it's comp.asker. So that's why it's different. Um, 2d2 plus. And this now becomes the game.names. Comp.asker. Come back over here, control R, new game, begin. So, player one suspects, player one suspects white with the lead pipe in the lounge 
who responds player 3 p3 so that's information has now been added we've reset back to who suspects something the table is happy we have the program back in tidy order next over here we now need that um, player adding thing so we have that hidden display of ours somewhere in here we made last week um, dialogue one that the class was hidden and in there we had a text area which was begin we never had a BR on the end of this which we really needed um, um, now we're going to have something else written under here um, all cards this one again will be <laughs> a little bit tricky to write I think I'll, I'll explain why I don't know exactly what we'll say um, cards uh, divided by type colon um, we need a br on this and then we'll do another text area text area and this one's id will be text card list text area and we'll put a br on that and we should probably give this one a number of rows and columns um, rows equals more than six probably make it We'll make it 12 calls equals 20. It won't look very tidy this way, but I might just make the calls wider on this one. Now when we control R over here, so now we've got player names and cards divided by type. Now we're going to fill this one in, of course, um, so that it starts looking correct, so that when people edit it, that it will make sense how to change it. Um, and to change that, we will need to have our make we had a function in there, wasn't it? It was new game dialog. Um, uh, C names equals document dot get element by ID. And this one is text. Is it just cards or card names? It's probably card names. <laughs> it's why we always recommend using good solid variable names, I suppose. Um, particularly for stuff that's going to be global. If it's local, it doesn't matter so much, obviously. Um, but the wider the scope of the variable, the more important it is and then you give it the right name. What are we doing now? P names. So we need to fill out the string with the cards that we currently have in two places. We've got the array, which is card names. And there's another array called B cards. Um, I'm tempted to stick this in another function. I might try it here and see what we get. But the 
two arrays I need to work with though B card types and B cards. Um, We'll start with B card types. We're going to loop through that <coughs> two at a time. And then we can colon separate those. And we use the colon as our key delimiter that says this is our, our maker for a new line. So. Who remembers what that card, what that was called? B card types, I think it was. So, for, and that was just a straight array, so I didn't need to worry too much. For i equals zero, semicolon, i is less than b card types dot length, i plus equals two. We have to go through two at a time because of the way I've stored them. Um, the, there was a good reason for storing them that way. Is that on a new line or not? That should be there. Um, <laughs> He's actually slightly dodgy because the thing I want to write will be after those things, but hopefully we'll be able to make this make sense. So um, I colon equals no, nope, we're not working with that. <laughs> and we're not programming in Golang. So, or Delphi. Delphi uses that, Pascal. Um, for i equals, so we're going through this. Uh, this is our outer. And then we're going to have an inner loop as well, aren't we? So that will be for. We'll make our. So we, we need a string variable. String. Lines first for the the card types, then loop all within their type and add a line each string. I'm thinking too much in Golang or something, some other language right now. So for no, we a variable var um, combi um, lines equals and that'll be an empty string, okay? And then lines plus equals B card types I plus quote colon plus B card types I plus one semicolon and then here um I know. I'm just going to close that here um, and add that to C names. So C names dot value. Well, oh, we should stick a new line on there. Plus quote new new line dot value equals lines. That should work. I always love saying that. <laughs> it's a great theory. Um,
Do we have any complaint? Did something not exist? Uh, the game is null. What's that complaining about? Do I refer to it too soon somewhere? That reckoned it's on line 144. Oh, I didn't used to do stuff after here, so it didn't matter. Um, I think I set it to null fairly quickly, don't I? Like, new game. B card types is not defined. So I'm working with an array that doesn't exist. Let's um. find out what it was called it's yeah that makes sense <laughs> I should never have let B card stay not in the right case we can do with that okay send s no it's send s uh, B card B card GC so yes Yes, 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 yes. Okay, I think that's happy it's done it now. So if I save this, um, control R, hit new game. C names is null. Did I never define C names? See, I must have defined it somewhere. Aha! It's complaining because I've tried to get something that doesn't exist. Uh, let's do get element by ID. Let's just make sure I call this by the right sensible name. That would make sense, card list, but it's. I'm going to make that names. I think it's more sensible to try and be more consistent. I've got player names and card names, right? Um, detective notes. There we go. So people with the weapons in the rooms dot who responds. Um, so people with the weapons in the rooms who responds. I don't know whether people will completely get this, but the theory here is that the weapons can then be on the next line um, could probably do with a separator like a, a new line separator before each group so that it becomes clearer so I'll need to be able to read new lines and cope if people don't include new lines so um, this is totally workable um, what was our method it was make the dialogue wasn't it new game dialogue so here inside this for loop we've made the first part the second part will of course be to do another for loop but I'm gonna quickly grab that part of the box first which is B cards now um, so we'll call it C group now I'll make a there on it there C group that's a card group equals B card types I
because um, for these ones are just sorted numerically, so I can work with a j. I think j equals zero. J is less than B uh, C group dot length so J plus plus and for each of these, what are we aiming for? We're going to add them to lines, aren't we? So it's lines plus equals C group at j plus, and I think we just add a new line, right? So, now if we come over here and refresh, new game, we now have people with a scarlet mustard white now. That is not completely easy to read, so I could see why people might not change anything. So, how can we make that more legible? The things I want to do is I would love to be able to put the with the before the weapons, um, and then the in the before the rooms, and then the final response afterwards. That would be tricky, but not impossible. be harder to read that way but again not impossible I think I'm going to put the dash over here because it's not that hard to put a dash um, and it wouldn't be that hard to get rid of the dash so now we refresh this new game so, we look at this, we've now got people with the, and then scarlet, white, mustard, and that's slightly easier to tell who's who. Should be able to add a new person like this. Um, think of a colour, black, that's a colour. Okay, um, so, begin. Um, nothing's changed yet, right? Well. We now need to read those results. I'm going to try and swap the, um, the the two parts here. Um, and actually, this isn't going to be as hard as I thought because I can put it on a new line and not bother with a new line at the end of the colon. So. We need a new line here, plus, quote, new line. And this bit here, everything from, no, oh, not from there. Um, can all go at the end of this mini for loop. How do they all get on the same line? That makes no sense. So I semicolon enter. Uh, 
Um, and that may have lost me my access. I may have think it may have lost out of the buffer the thing, but let's try. No, they're all there. Okay, so um, lines plus equals x colon b card types now here I don't want the colon I definitely don't want it here um, but I want to replace this with a colon And then if we come back over here and refresh, we should have so people, Scarlet, what's a job? Um, <laughs> with the the spaces on the with the are there. Um, I'll leave that as it is for now uh, with the weapons. Um, Who responds, which is the next question at the end. Now, our next function, which is going to be much harder than printing, is reading in an appropriate fashion what we've written. Because if we're going to make this available, then when I click begin, people should just be able to ignore this and, and it'll work. But if someone changes one of the weapons from dagger to knife, we should be able to see that night knife we should be able to see that in the new game but clearly we don't see that right now and that happens in our new game function that we may end up making a reader function depending on how easy this I feel like this really needs to be its own function um, and it takes an array of string doesn't it probably just takes a string I'll have to split it on the new lines anyway. So, um, I'd like to make it a pure function. <laughs> that is something that takes the string and returns the two values that need to be included. Um, set B cards and set the other one appropriately. We can do that. We can always return it in an object, can't we? And then the program will work. Again, these are the kinds of things that I loved Golang for and I love Python for as well. You get to return two variables at the same time in a really easy way. I mean, it works in Golang. In, in Java, you can just stick them in an array and stuff. But So here's our new function. And this function is um, make card list. And this will take a string. Um, lines. We'll call it lines. Which is probably the most accurate description of it. We have a bunch of lines, although it's a single string. Um, pretty sure split just exists, so I think I can just do lines dot split on new line. So here we go. Cards. No. Um, I call this S, and in here I have a new variable called lines, which equals S dot split, and we're going to split it on a new line, and console dot log lines, <laughs> lines. 
should hopefully have an array of strings which are appropriate and if I go back to the new game function um, players just becomes empty I'm not putting anything in there at all. Okay, so I think it's actually okay to put this here at the end. And this function was called, I can't even remember what I called it. I wrote it a good two seconds ago. Make card list. Vaguely same name, right? New game. Before draw table, we right? Make card list. Oh, and we should take lines, which means reading that object, which is cards dot. Um, C list equals get element by ID. The element we're getting by it. the ID we're going to use is text underscore card names. I remember doing that now. And in here we just put C list dot value. This code is getting more complicated. We're starting to get to a point where I want to split the file, but Yeah, the plan was to make this a single file thing so that anyone can just take the one file and it will run anywhere. Um, come over here. Control R. New game. Um, and if I, if I put this PK begin. Reventary. We forgot to write the word document. Um, okay, that should fix that. I actually really like to have this a little bit wider, so a couple less things get bothered. Um, and then if I refresh, new game, begin. So now we have a list, the array is people, scarlet, white, mustard, green. So split definitely does what I expected it to do. Good. Um, so we no longer need this. Basically, it's for each line. We've got some different things to do. And we got two result boxes, haven't we? So we got um, res. Res BC, that's B cards, right? Res BC, that'd be a fair. Res BC equals, and that's a new object. And the other one is ver res um, CT, that's card types equals and that's just a straightforward array. And then for i equals zero i is less than lines dot length I plus plus L line yeah, um, fair L. I should make that I a fair as well, so we don't overwrite some global variable could I. <laughs> Who would choose the global variable could I anyway? But just in case, fair L equals. Um, lines. 
eye, right? So now we're working with the line. Um, and if we search through that line, the first question we can ask is if L at zero equals um, for now we'll put does not equal and then the character, character dash and then we can console dot log um, L. So we should only get the lines printed which don't have that dash. New game. Begin. So pe uh, here we have people with the weapons in the rooms who respond. So that's the four lines that don't begin with um, begin with a dash. Right now, those can be fixed. We're going to make the card list. We need to pull them out. In this case, I'm going to make this an equals actually. Um, and we'll have an else. So there are two basic cases, right? Um, The other case, of course, is that um, L0 is, I guess, undefined. Um, we need to be able to handle undefined loops. So probably does mean having an if L equals and the empty string. L is the empty string. We don't actually want to do anything, do we? <laughs> if I do it the other way around, I have to put the other things inside. Um, no, it's probably better if I do this. If L does not, oh, does not equal the empty string. Feel like I've mixed these up on my. Hang on. Um, I need that to here and that there. I think that tidies everything up. So the only, the only time we do anything is if L is not equal to the empty string. If L is not equal to the empty string, then in this case, ah. Uh, current um, no forget about current um, for now now I need to know what I'm adding to in this in this thing. No, I do need a, a current um, there. Current equals. Just in case. I mean, if we get anything before, that will still be a problem, but it's probably better. So in this case, um, we want to basically strip it, um, take away the dash, 
and anything either side of the string um, We can definitely substring, um, so cur plus equals l dot substring one I, I don't know JavaScript substring just right now, so let's give a quick look. JS substring start end. You assume if it doesn't have an end, it just guesses the whole way. Um, Yeah, I think one is the right answer there, so we just get rid of the dash. Um, and it shouldn't be plus equals, because current is not a string, it's an array, so it's push, I think. And in theory, if I just log um, um, L, no current, which I should just get all of the um, the names without that dash, right? Um, control R, new game. Um, if I change that to rup and click begin, so now we have an array: scarlet, white, mustard green, plum, peacock, rup, dagger, lead pipe, candlestick. So good. A substring has done exactly what I was hoping for. Um, we should, in theory, now. Be pretty close to changing this. Um, otherwise, oh, this is actually not too bad. We can split this on a colon. Um, L dot split colon. L. Can I can I just push this? Do I have to use a pend? Um, we need to grab the last one. So first, um, first ar colon um, equals again there ar equals um, l dot split. I'm going to split it on the colon. Once we split it on the colon, we now have, we can simply add them to the right place in the array. So current current equals a new ray. Um, we'll add current to the right place, which is the last entry of the split. Um, so res ct at ar AR dot length minus one. Um, 
equals. <laughs> Trying to give the user this much freedom has led to some really weird ways of behaving. I'm pretty sure that it's right. So res. So we've made this new current, and that equals current, right? So um, now when we add to current, we'll be adding it to the list that matches the name of the last one, that we've, the last element of this array. Um, but res.bc also needs to be um, appended. Is there an append in JavaScript? Let's just check. JavaScript js array append or concat. Push. So I can push multiple like that. Oh, we've got a concat there. Array equals array dot concat. Um, and then we've added another array. So that's. I think it create. It looks like that creates a new array, but keeps all the elements. And since they're objects and just pointers, this should, in theory, work. That resbc equals resbc dot concat, and what we're going to concat is a r, which is the array that's come out from the split. Um, So, in theory, if I can get a console log on this, we should actually see um, a relatively tidy set. Or why not? Well, no, 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 let's return it. Return. Pretend like this is a pure function. It kind of is if I do this return. Return res bc res ct. So, um, turns first the array of types, then the array. No, the array, the list of the list of all cards. Checked list of cards. Okay, so that's B cards and then B C um, B card types. We're making that a return function. We can actually just uh, um, log that in the place where we call it and see if we get the right result. Um, where did we call it? New game, I guess. Um, BC, um, BC, B card set equals, and then if we do a console.log on B card, console. Dot log b card set and f this might work be funny if it does work it'd be nice if it does work i reckon i've done too many weird things to make that work first time res.bc.concat is not a function hang on i got a phone Make option suspect something. Concat is not a function. But someone told me that concat was a function.
Which one was I trying to concat? Did I try and concat to an object? Let's have a look. Ooh. Wrong buttons. This isn't GVim anymore. This is just normal Vim. Uh, let's search for the word concat and see. Ooh. Concat. There's only one place I've used it. Res BC. I think I've been confused here. I think this one should be BC. What did BC stand for again? It was like battle cards or something? No, it's B cards. And B cards was the object. And the card types is the array. Yeah, this is the wrong way around. So that should be BC. And that should be CT. Card types. OK, so now in theory, did I just write that? I did. Um, I can control R this. New game. Begin. What? Control R. New game. Begin. Oh. Um. Control R that. New game. No complaint, we've got an array with an object which contains people, rooms, and weapons. Each of these is an appropriately sized array. Let's have a peek. Scarlet, white, mustard. Very nice. Um, and the other array I've got here is people with the weapons in the rooms who responds, which is actually perfect. That's exactly what I want. So in theory, I can now set these in the new game thing where I've got my response. New game. I can use this response. Get rid of the log. Um, there. B cards. Probably would be better. Would be to store B cards as the default and have a separate the game dot B cards, um, which it uses if it can't find B cards. That way you've got a bit of a default. But I'm not. For now, I'm just going to use B cards equals and which which side of the array was that? B cards is the object, so that's um, B card set zero. And their B card types is the array, which is the second parameter, B card set one. And then when it draws the table. So now if I come over here, control R, new game, but now I'm going to change people to persons um, and white. Is now called Bianca for random reasons. And then begin. What do we have? We have scarlet, white. <laughs> How very silly of me. Okay. Spot the deliberate mistake. It wasn't a deliberate mistake at all. You get in the habit of writing there. You don't need to write. If you want to use the global variable, you can't write. Um, you can't write the word there in front because that means you're using only a variable that's limited to the scope of the current function. <laughs> that is something JavaScript definitely did wrong. Um, that murderers Again. so now we have our new set of cards 
Um, and I guess we can suspect, if player one suspects Bianca with the dagger in the library, we now have who responds. My responders have all disappeared. Okay, let's do a quick console log and see what the... So, new game. Ah, here's a problem. We got an undefined added on the end of that list. Is that is that the same line? Might be the same line. Um, let's click begin. Player one, Scarlet, Rope. Let's see if we get undefined. No, who responds? So I know basically what the problem is and why it's not working. Not completely sure how to get rid of that. Because um, I throw that colon on at the end, don't I? Um, the place where I did the concap. Um, I throw this colon on. But if there's nothing after the colon, which could entirely be possible, um, then it adds this undefined on the end of that array, and that, ar that then confuses the whole system after that. Um, I think I'd rather be better at receiving um, so we need to clear white space on the was it make or read um, what's the function we call in new game make card list If the second side of that colon, this is this, this is still problematic. It's not going to be a very tidy system because we're giving the user a load of string to edit. But if we make the card list a colon split, um, we need to check that the string is not only white space. Now we use. Uh, have we got a J already? Are we inside J? Or I? So there J equals zero. J is less than. Does JavaScript have a trim? I think it does. JS trim.
removes white space from both sides of a string. So sh in theory, JS dot trim of um, a long white space string will be empty. J is less than zero, one. J is less than um, AR dot length. J plus plus. We'll get rid of that because now what we're doing, we'll put it inside here for now. Um, but it's no longer that. It's it's actually an if. If ar dot trim does not equal in that case, we um, just push. It's not AR, it's AR at J. Okay, so back to our game, Control R, new game. Um, and this time we're going to change some things again. So we'll have Scarlet goes to red. Um, Baddies. Um, begin. So we've got baddies, red's now the name here. Player one suspects white with the dagger in the conservatory. Player three responds. Good, we get asked two responds. And now we know that player two doesn't have any of these things. Um, and we could change the cards. Um, so if we do a new game again, baddies should still be there if we check the top. We can actually add another thing. This was the, this was the whole idea. The whole reason I wanted to do this was to be able to add this mm. because well, this is one of the ideas because motive, um, and then we can have revenge, um, love. Money. Um, I can't think of any other motives right now. I'm sure there are more. And then we'll still have a who responds. And if we click begin, we now have baddies, weapons, rooms, and motives. And if we ask the question, player two asks the question, I suspect mustard with the lead pipe in the lounge because of money. And it's player one responds. And we find out that mustard, lead pipe, lounge, and money are not the reasons. And there we go. So you can add new cards just like that in the entire thing. You can add a whole different set of cards. Anyone can do that. Um, I think that's a good place to stop for today. So we'll call that a day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you sometime in the near future. Bye.